All right, so in free response problem six, we're given this function, which is a piecewise function. And as you can see, you have um, one equation for x is less than or equal to one and other equation three plus four e to the x minus one for x is larger than one. And, and the, you're told it's defined you know, for these values and it's asking, is the function continuous at one? and why or why not so um again pay attention to you know what the question is expecting you to do it's expecting you to answer you know and show whether or not it's continuous and then to explain or sh demonstrate that you understand why it is or isn't all right so um for a function to be for this function to be continuous at x equals one that means that the value that you would get by plugging one into each equation would be the same. So if you plug in one into here, with the top expression, you would get 10 minus two times one minus one squared, 10 minus two minus one, so you would get seven. And if you plug it into the other one, three plus four e to the one minus one, which is just three plus four e to the zero. e to the zero is just one, so this just also becomes seven. So it's gonna be continuous because you get the same value for each equation by plugging in x equals one. Formally, you, these are one-sided limits. So you could essentially say yes, because the limit of f of x as you approach one from the negative side, remember use this, is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the positive side. So both one side limits are equal to each other. And so then it is continuous at x equals one. All right, part B, find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value of F on the closed interval from negative two to two. Show the analysis that leads to your conclusion. Okay, so remember um, one general strategy that you can use to find the minimum of a fa function on some interval is to figure out the derivative and, um, and, and you know, investigate the beha behavior of the derivative. Investigate where the derivative is positive and where it's negative because um, a minimum occurs, you know, when the derivative, you know, is negative and it changes to being positive and a maximum occurs when, you know, the, the derivative changes from being positive to being negative. Now, let's look at values that could be potential maximums and minimums by first differentiating this function. So we are, we're going to have two expressions for the derivative since we have a piecewise function. So we're going to have f prime of x is equal to negative 2 minus 2x two for x is less than or equal to 1. And for the second expression, you would have it as simply four e to the x minus one, because that three goes away and the derivative, the derivative of e to the x minus one is e to the x minus one. So we get four e to the x minus one for when x is greater than one. Now let's look for possible critical values. So let's find where the derivatives could be zero, zero or undefined on each of those intervals. So f prime of x is zero in this first expression when you have negative two minus two x equal to zero or for x is equal to one, right? No, negative one, whoops, negative one. So that's one possible value we have to investigate. And then on this interval, when it, where is the derivative, you know, equal to zero.
And that would be nowhere. There's nowhere. It's not going to be equal to zero for any value in that interval because you can't make e to some power equal to zero. So um, what you can do, though, is going back to the function, is since, you know, we, we can see that the derivative or the slope of this line and this line are not going to be equal to each other at x equals one. We have a point, we have a value where the derivative is undefined. So we so let's write f prime of x is undefined at x equals one. This is see it doesn't it's, it, all it says is the function is continuous at one. Or it always showed that the function, I mean, always showed in part A was the function being continuous at one. That doesn't mean it's going to be differentiable. Because again, a function could be continuous at some point, but maybe it's maybe the maybe maybe it has you know maybe like a a sharp you know peak at that point. So that the slope from the left side it wouldn't be equal to the slope from the right side. So, but we still have to investigate those points. So we want to investigate what's going on at these points, but also the endpoints. So we let's check what f of negative two is, what f of negative one is, what f of one would be and what f of two would be. And we compare the, the values. So we find these values by plugging them in appropriately for negative two and negative one. We're gonna plug them into this, into this expression. So we would get 10 minus two times negative two minus negative two squared or minus four, which we get 14 minus four, you get 10. Negative one back into that same expression, we would get 10 minus two times negative one minus one. So 12 minus one, we would get 11. And now for x equals one and x equals two, we're gonna plug it into this expression. The so three plus four e to the x minus one. So three plus four e to the one minus one is just three plus four times e to the zero or three plus four, which will be seven. And for two, we get three plus four e to two minus one or three plus four e. So out of these four values, what's the smallest and what's the, what's the largest? So the seven's the smallest. I mean, so the seven, yeah, the seven is smallest. So um, we have a minimum at f of one, which is equal to seven. And we have a maximum at f is f of two at three plus four e because remember three plus four e is about two point seven ish the so four times like two point seven ish is going to be at least ten and that'll be larger than the other ones so at f of two is equal to three plus four e so again they they want you to show your work which this is what I'm showing here to get full credit. And then part C, actually it's pretty simple if you do parts A and B correct. Let's just find the integral from zero to two of f of x dx. So all that really entails is making sure you break up the integral at one. So we're gonna integrate it from zero to one with this expression or this as the integrand, and then from one to two with this as an integrand. So this integral will be equal to the integral from zero to one of 10 minus two X minus X squared plus the integral from one to two of three plus four E to the X minus one DX. Integrating then just using the basic properties of anti-differentiation, -differ differentiation, we get 10 X minus two X squared over two minus x cubed over three from zero to one 
plus integral or plus six, the, the second one being three X plus four E to the X minus one. from one to two. Using our algebra skills, we get 10 minus one squared or minus one, minus one third. This zero doesn't become an issue, so we don't have to acknowledge it even. And for this one, we would get three times two, six plus four e to the two minus one or plus four e to the one, minus three times one or just three, plus four e to the one minus one or four e to the zero or just four times one. Combining all this, nine, eight and two thirds plus three, no plus, plus five plus four e. And we get hold on a second, I think I, I think I messed up on this part. I don't know. Six plus four e three plus four. So oh, yeah, oh, whoops, minus seven. This will be minus seven. So this will get a negative one plus a negative one. So eight, eight and two thirds minus one plus four E, or we have seven and two thirds plus four E as your final answer. All right, and there we go. There's my solution. I hope that helps, but let me know. Um, if I can improve it, but good luck.